In this video, we are going to see how to evaluate a surface integral. In this particular problem, we have asked to find out the surface integral of this given function. And also the question says, S is the hemisphere x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 4. Here you can see this is the equation of a sphere. Since they have mentioned this z should be above or equal to 0, this means this sphere is going to be half of the sphere. Okay, And also the radius is going to be 2 because we have 4 right here. If you take the square root of this one, this is going to be just 2, right? So the radius is going to be 2 and we are going to have half of the sphere. Now let's go ahead and draw the graph for this one. Okay, here we are going to have the graph. This is our z, z axis, this is our y axis and this is our x axis. And let's draw a curve like this. And then we are going to connect this one like this let's put dot dot because the other side is behind okay so this one is going to be dot dot line and this is this is going to be our sphere okay so for the sphere no matter where you take the radius it's going to be two everywhere right no matter where you start like if you go from here to here it's going to be still 2. If you go from here to here it's still going to be 2, right? It doesn't matter where you take, everywhere it's going to be 2, okay? Now to find out the surface integral we have to use this equation that is given by double integral f of x comma y comma g of x comma y square root of 1 plus partial derivative of z with respect to x square plus partial derivative of z with respect to y square dA, okay? Now first uh, let's go ahead and write our double integral but before we do that we have to find out the partial derivative of z with respect to x and partial derivative of z with respect to y but in our case we don't have any equation that is related to z we have this equation we have to rearrange this one in order to solve for z and if you do that this is going to become z square is equal to 4 minus x square minus y square okay and if you take the square root like if we take square root both sides and if we take the partial derivative that's going to be really hard if you solve like that. So here what we are going to do is we are going to take the implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation is basically we take the partial derivative of, like first we take the derivative of c that's going to be just 2z then we take the partial derivative of z with respect to x and we are going to do the same thing for y first we take for the x and if you do that in the other side this 4 is going to become 0 because we are taking the partial derivative with respect to x so this is going to be 0 then this is going to become negative 2x and uh, this y also going to become 0 because since we are taking partial derivative with respect to x y, is, y will be treated as a constant so this is going to be 0 and if we rearrange this for partial derivative of z with respect to x that's going to give us negative 2x over 2z okay so this is one of the part needed here because we need partial derivative of z with respect to x we have that one here and also we had to find out the partial derivative of z with respect to y again we are going to do the implicit differentiation in implicit differentiation we take the derivative of this z that's going to be 2z then also we take the derivative of z with respect to y so that's going to be partial derivative of z with respect to y and in the other side we have 4 is going to become 0 and negative x square also going to become 0 then this negative y square will become negative 2y and if we rearrange this one for partial derivative of z with respect to y that's going to become negative 2y over 2z now we have the partial derivative of z with respect to x and partial derivative of z with respect to y so we can go ahead and plug it in this equation now let's go ahead and write our double integral in double integral we are going to have f of x comma y that's going to be this function but when we do that we have to have g of x comma y this g of x comma y is we have to write this z in terms of x and y but since we don't have the, any equation related to z if we can do that by like here we have z square is equal to 4 minus x square minus y square then we have to take the square root both side and in that way it's going to be hard but here th there's an easy way you will see that now let's see here we have I'm just going to copy this one down now to eliminate this c we can do something this is going to be x square z plus y square z and then if we put this one in the square root 
this is going to be 1 plus and then we have the possibility to z with respect to x that is negative 2x over 2z and if we square this one this negative will cancel because if we square this is going to become 4 actually this 4x square over 4z square 4 4 cancel we will just get x square over z square since we are squaring this one this negative will be eliminated right so we can just put x square over z square and then for this one we are going to have 4 y square over 4 z square since we are squaring this one this negative also will be eliminated so we will just have y square over z square okay now here the first thing is we have to eliminate this z if we can't eliminate we had to copy this like we had to rearrange this equation in terms of z and we had to like in terms of x and y then we had to plug it instead of c but we can do something about this let's see so here we are going to have now let this let's keep this da and d for now because we are we can do that later now let's try to simplify this one this is going to be x square z plus y square z and then here we have z square z square common denominator for these two but here we have one right to take the common denominator for all these three we can write this one as z square over z square okay and then we can write this one as x square over z square and this is going to be just y square over z square and in the outside we are going to have da and this is d let's simplify this one here we can take z square common so this is going to become x square z plus y square z and then we we are going to have we can take this this the denominator okay first write this one as z square common in the denominator so z square in the top we are, we are going to have z square plus x square plus y square and this denominator z square we can take this outside right because we have 1 over z square and the integ i mean square root of 1 over z square that's going to be just 1 over z so this is going to be just x square z plus y square z and we are going to multiply this one with 1 over z and then we are going to have x square plus y square plus z square and that's it we have double integral and d this is da this is d da now from this one you can see from this one you can see that we can cancel these two z right this z this z cancel with this one so we don't have to worry about this function g of xy we don't have to worry about that part because we don't have any z right here so we can just leave it like this right and also for this x square plus y square plus z square in the equation we have given that x square plus y square plus z square is equal to 4 so instead of this one we can plug this 4 right here if we plug this one this is going to be square root of 4 and we know that square root of 4 is equal to 2 so we can take this 2 outside so this is going to be 2 double integral and then we are going to have x square plus y square and then we are going to have da okay now we have this simplified part now let's get rid of this one because we need some space let's get rid of this part and we are going to continue right here okay here we have two double integral x square plus y square da and if you look at this one this is a half sphere and if you project this one in the xy plane this is going to be a circle right and also we have x square plus y square and when we have x square plus y square we can convert this one into polar coordinates and if you do that we know that x square plus y square in polar coordinate that's equal to r square so this is going to be just r square and then if we change this one into polar coordinates this da will become r dr d theta and this constant remains the same so we are going to have this constant and first of all since we are integrating with this one with respect to r and theta we have to know the limits of integration with respect to r and theta first we are going to integrate with respect to r now let's look at the limits of integration for r it's going to be just the radius of the circle and we know that the radius is already there like we already found it that is true right and since the radius cannot be negative this is going to go from 0 to 2 okay and also we have the full circle this half this is a half sphere but this is a full circle right here right so this is going to go from 0 to 2 phi so that's going to be the outer limits of integration now we can go ahead and do the integration right here this is going to be 0 to 2 r cube dr d theta and in the outside we are going to have 0 to 2 phi and also we have this constant 2 
and if we integrate this one with respect to r this is going to become r power 4 divided by 4 that's going from 0 to 2 and then we are going to have 0 to 2 phi and then day theta and in the outside we have 2 and if we plug 2 for this one this is going to be 2 power 4 2 power 4 is equal to 16 16 divided by 4 that's going to be 4 right so 4 and if we substitute 0 that's going to be just 0 and then if we integrate this one with respect to theta theta this is going to be just 4 theta and that one multiply by 2 and this is going from 0 to 2 phi and if you plug 2 phi instead of theta that's going to be 8 phi and 8 phi times 2 16 phi but if you plug 0 that's going to be just 0 so we can just leave it as it is and this is going to be our final answer 16 phi is going to be the surface integral of this given function i hope this helps thanks for watching